Tarau is one of the most beautiful and historically memorable cities of Kazakhstan. Geographically, it is located in the West Kazakhstan region, which ensures proximity to five regions of the Russian Federation at once. The total length of the external borders is more than one and a half thousand kilometers. Inside the Republic, the territory is neighboring with the Aktobe and Atarau regions. However, these lands attracted the humans' attention long before there were any idea of statehood. Mankind has mastered and inhabited the steppe territory overall, where the Transurals were located in the Paleolithic era, as evidenced by the found mausoleums, ancient settlements, and cities. Tribes that traveled the Great Steppe from west to east and from east to west willingly populated these places. Несмотря на то, что Уральск основан, ну, во всяком случае, на нынешнем месте, в 1613 году, Despite the fact that Ural was founded in 1613, on this land, the traditions of architecture go back to the centuries. We all know from the school that in the lower reaches of the ural Jaik River, there are ruins of the ancient Ord and later the Nogai settlement Sarayshik. Today, there is a museum, an architectural reserve. It was a fairly large Ord city located on caravan routes. Archaeologists have uncovered a fairly large number of monuments that show that the city had a very famous architecture, its own core of interesting historical buildings, mosques, and baths. The very etymology of the name of the city suggests the main geographical prerequisite for its foundation. Uralsk or Ural is located on the banks of the Ural River. Its historic name, Yaik, in translation from Turkic languages means wide streaming. The surroundings of the Volga and Yaik rivers have been inhabited since time immemorial. And although there is no written evidence of this fact, certain studies by archaeologists prove this. Особой сенсацией в начале уже нашего столетия стало открытие уральскими археологами. A special sensation at the beginning of our century was the discovery of the ancient settlement of the Golden Ord era of 13th-15th centuries by archaeologists, not far from the modern border of Ural, in the area of Svistun Mountains on the banks of the Ural River. Unfortunately, we do not know the name of the settlement, because written sources do not mention it. The toponym Uralsk refers to the year 1613, the time when the Cossacks founded their first settlements on this territory. But there is direct evidence of the existence of the city Zhayuk, dated to the 13th century of our era. Formerly, the city laid the foundation of modern Ural. Many archaeological finds allowed Zhayuk to be included in the list of 100 sacred places in Kazakhstan. We discovered the remains of a medieval urban settlement in 2001, 12 kilometers from the city of Ural. The hill fort consists of two parts. This is the city itself, on the territory which we are now. It covers an area of 8 hectares and necropolis, which is located on Svestun Mountain. The main burials and mausoleums allow us to characterize the city. A total painstaking research work of 15 years by Kazakh and Russian experts gives an extremely complete picture of the life of the Asian settlement. The calculations of scientists suggest that Zhayuk is a medieval urban settlement of the Golden Ord era. The peak of development came on the 13th and 14th centuries. It can also be safely stated that at least 800 people lived here permanently. Functionally, it is an administrative and trade and craft center. Within its borders, traces of a bathhouse, mosque and residential buildings are found. A special contribution to the historical awareness of the past was made by the study of found production facilities for brick burning and craft workshops. In particular, a workshop for leather processing.
Вероятнее всего, это, это городище, а мы дали ему название Жаик по... Most likely, this is a hill fort, and we gave it a name of the ancient Jayek River. This city was the center of the Blue Ort, which occupied the territory of the Ural River Basin in the 13th-14th centuries. The state was in contact with both the Golden Ort and White Ort. Later it became part of the Golden Ort. As we have already mentioned, next to the settlement there is the most important tool which helps to understand the past, the necropolis. A mausoleum with the remains of 11 people buried at different times was found here. The building itself is clearly divided in two parts, a room for the funeral service and for the burial of the dead. This mausoleum that we see here is a large mausoleum. Its total height, as we established by reconstruction, is about 12 meters, and a small mausoleum, its height is about 9 meters. It is a powerful fundamental building which befits the mausoleum, which was built in honor of Genghis Khan's eldest son, Juchi. Therefore, we can conclude that these buildings were built at the same time. This allows us to conclude that the direct descendants of Genghis Khan are buried here. The small mausoleum is the burial place of one person, a man of 45-50 years old who died as a result of a head skull injury. His body is the body of a warrior, as evidenced by his many scars on his bones. This is a man who undoubtedly was a military leader. The construction of bricks was strengthened with lime mortar. It was noticed that the decoration of the premises included the use of glazed tiles. Ancient urban planners apparently paid tribute to the aesthetic side of life. A lot of colored material, different colored paints and gold were used to decorate the building. This brick is characteristic of the Golden Ord architecture. It is square, with a thickness of about 5-6 centimeters, sides of about 20-25 centimeters. In the era of the Golden Ord, houses were built without a foundation and the mausoleums too. These solid bricks were bonded with lime mortar, and due to this, an integral structure was assembled. It was almost impossible to break it. It should be noted that the mausoleums were not operated as residential buildings, and therefore such a construction without foundation is quite justified. In order to preserve the pristine appearance of the findings and protect the heritage of their ancestors from natural destruction, the Jaik fortified settlement has been conserved with dense ground cover over the past few years. This ensures the safety of objects for future generations. All the cities that we discovered in the West Kazakhstan region over the years, Zhayek, Zhalpaktau, Sarauzin, they are located in the European side and not in the Bukhara side. This suggests that this part has been significantly inhabited. This conclusion leads us to the need of a new approach in covering the medieval history of Kazakhstan. We think that this city existed for about 100-120 years. Then, for natural reasons, most likely the disaster caused by the flooding of the Ural River made people leave the settlement in an organized way. In my opinion, they settled on the territory of modern Ural. The second birth of a settlement happened thanks to the local Cossacks. They spread the toponym Yaitsky town. By this period, they began to build buildings in the style of Russian classicism, but with explicit references to the cultural code of the architecture of the East. It is such a Eurasian approach that makes the city look inimitable. The first buildings in Oral made in Eastern traditions were places of religious rites. The very first mosque was located in the historical district of the city, Kureni. The mosque is practically of the same age as the city and as the oldest stone building, St. Michael, the Archangel Cathedral. After numerous fires, the mosque was painted with lime, and therefore it was called the White Mosque, Ach Mosque. And in the new Tatar settlement in 1880, a new mosque was erected, 
a completely unique two-story mosque, the walls of which were painted red with minium. This mosque was called the Red Mosque, the Kazil Mosque. Thus, two mosques appeared in Ural, white and red. In total, before the revolution, four mosques were erected in Ural, three stone and one wooden. Stone mosques were built at the expense of the merchants of the Tatar diaspora. A wooden mosque located near the Han Grove was erected by the efforts of the Kazakh foreman Karaul Babajanov immediately after his initiation into the Han status of Han Jangir. Today, there are three mosques in Ural, one new, located in the city center, and two historical ones that have survived to this day. It is a new bazaar and red. People call it Tatar Mosque. On the road, the building in the 20th and 21st centuries has been at the turn of the 20th and 21st centuries, the building got very old. The wooden minaret disappeared in Soviet times in the 1930s. The building was severely damaged and was ready to disappear. But thanks to the efforts of the public and the representative of the Tatar diaspora, Rishad Khairulin, the building of the mosque was again restored. At the moment, this is again a god's house. It operates like a mosque. Thus, it was saved for another generation. The area near the Red Mosque is one of the most well-groomed. When they were working on the landscaping, there were heavy rains and the grass rose literally in four days. As a rule, this takes at least a week. Of course, worshippers recognize this as the manifestation of higher powers. People believe that the place of the mosque was not chosen by chance and that good power and healing energy are concentrated here. When this mosque was built and a dome was placed over the minaret, there was a severe thunderstorm on this day. The roof of the Dostig trading house fell off. When the builders got up the next day, they saw that the minaret was mounted on three bolts instead of 16. That is, a huge roof in the neighborhood was destroyed, but it remained in place. This suggests that there is some kind of force that needs to be believed. Another religious attraction of Ural is the new Bazaar Mosque. It was built at the expense of the merchant Murtaza Gubaydulin in 1897 and inherits the image of the Sultan Mosque in Kazan. The only significant difference is that the Sultan Mosque is a two-story building and the new Bazaar Mosque is only one story. There was a madrasa at the mosque. In non-religious era of the Soviet Union, the mosque was transferred to the state. The building served a special role during the World War II. It housed a post office, a military tribunal, and a collection point for repressed residents. The mosque was revived in the 50s of the 20th century. Then Mullah Tajidin Batiruli made a significant contribution to the revival of the spiritual values of Islam. His role was noted by descendants, and in 2016, the mosque was renamed in honor of Tajidin. Unfortunately, the minaret of the building did not retain its original appearance as it was restored. A new bazaar mosque was built in Ural in 1897. It was erected by Murtaza Abdulin. The capacity in the mosque during prayer reaches up to 250 people. Tatar Ulgusunde, Salon Hambulatan, Bull Mishte, Purwachta, Yukuziru Adam. There is a madrasa at the mosque. It was open in 2006. Students who were born starting from 2011 go there. About 40 people study in it.
the synthesis of Europe and Asia appears more clearly in the guise of secular buildings. So in the last quarter of the 19th century, buildings of the Romantic direction began to appear in Oral, with a noticeable influence of Oriental motives. One of the most famous architects of that time was Ivan Andreevich Tetz, who after graduating from St. Petersburg Academy of Arts, moved to live and work in Oral. The fate of Ivan Tetz, a military architect, was very successful in Oral. Almost all of his creative life took place in the city, and only towards the end of his life he managed to realize his long-held dream – to build his own house. Before that, we know that in the historical Oral newspapers, it was written that he rented a place to live in the house of his colleague, the architect Kondrachin. Ivan Tetz lived in Oral until the end of his life. It's impossible to overestimate his influence on the city's appearance. Under his leadership, the Venusian's apartment building, the summer cottage of the Ottomans, his own mansion, and the Russian Kyrgyz school were built. Began in the 1870s. Initially, the building in which the children studied was not large in size and was located in a rented room. But due to the relevance and desire of Kazakh families to educate their children, an estimate was developed for the construction of the new school. At that time, Virevkin and later Pokatilov made inquiries to St. Petersburg with a request to build in Oral an already full-fledged Russian Kyrgyz school. They made an approximate estimate and turned out to be about 7,000 rubles. But during the development of this project, over several years, the cost of the school grew to 47,000 rubles. The construction of the Russian Kyrgyz craft school ended in 1879. Here the boys were taught literacy and various crafts. Today the building of the Russian Kyrgyz school houses the West Kazakhstan Regional History and Local Lore Museum with a rich fund of more than 140,000 exhibits. Among them is a huge collection of archaeological finds, jewelry and ethnographic objects. The museum exposition has eight halls that reveal the history of the region from ancient times to the present day. Батс Казахстан областных тарихи улкитану музей Казахстан дага ен коне музейлердин бире музей гимаратну узун жусиксин жолдан астам тарихвар жане музей кормда жус кркна. In the West Kazakhstan region, the Museum of Local History is one of the oldest in Kazakhstan and contains about 180 years of history. The museum's collection contains 140,000 exhibits. The museum consists of two floors. On the first floor, there are four halls. The Hall of Archaeology, the Settlement of Zhayuk, Kazakh Khans, with the yurt and national clothes of the Kazakhs. On the second floor of the museum, there are exhibits of the 20th century. Here we'll see the tools and things of people who were subject to repression. Our museum is often visited by guests of the city as well as the city residents. Students, children with teachers from kindergartens come here for excursions. All of them are interested in the history of their native land. A considerable part of this outstanding buildings is located on the main street of the city. In fact, the city itself became the main attraction. Literally, every building has a centuries-old history. It keeps the memory of famous people who once lived here or came to visit. In the row, Empress Alexander II and Nicholas II state, Emilian Pugachev led his uprising here against the Empress Catherine the Great, and as a result, Generalissimo Suborov was sent by the Empress to suppress the uprising. Gavriil Derjavin and Alexander Pushkin were also eminent guests of the provincial town. Vladimir Dal has been to Oral many times. The poets Zhukovsky and Shevchenko, the great Russian writer Leo Tolstoy. All this is not a complete list of famous guests of the city. Of course, such a heritage attracts pilgrims even today. My time so far in Uralsk. 
Uh, it's a fantastic small city and uh, it was kind of a surprise for me. Very clean, uh, lots of friendly people here. And uh, it's a nice opportunity to, um, to show our university in Colorado, USA. Uh, we are looking to, um, to recruit students who are interested in studying engineering or um, business. And uh, we are um, thankfully here with the Bola Shock Development Fund and, uh, and we're in our fifth city so far. It's we are here in Udralsk, Kazakhstan. Beautiful city, great architecture, beautiful colors. Uh, the weather is so nice. It's cool, I like cool weather. As has been noted more than once, the historical architecture of Ural has a pronounced oriental flavor, and the most consistent conductor of this cultural collaboration is the architect Ivan Tetz. It is known for certain that he built a huge number of unique buildings in Ural, but unfortunately, listing them all is now impossible due to the lost archives. Only preserved buildings speak for themselves. According to modern architects, the oriental style was reproduced by Tetz for the city, which personifies the gate to Asia. The architect himself lived in a house that he built in the Moorish style, reminiscent of a miniature Russian Kyrgyz school. The house of his dreams was surrounded by a beautiful garden and fully reflected the author's ideas about refined 